guys ready? You guys ready? All right, I'd like to go ahead and open the public hearing section of the Warrington Board Revolvement for Tuesday, July 16, 2019. And I believe Councillor Greville will open us up. Good evening, Mayor and Board. The uh, city clerk has asked I'd take my time and explain everything in great detail for these public hearings. <laughs> that was a joke. Um, the first public hearing we have tonight is section 410 to include cluster style mailboxes and cluster style or cluster mailbox areas, ADM 101. Um, as you guys will recall, this was generated out of the change to the local postmaster requiring cluster style mailboxes. Uh, the city tried to work with state and um, federal officials to try to get this changed. We could not get it changed. And so what we wanted to make sure was in our subdivision code, uh, as new subdivisions come in, that the cluster style mailbox was a requirement because what we found was that the residents of some of the newly built houses that are older subdivisions were basically told by the developer to go pick up their mail at the post office and that was unacceptable answer for us so we wanted to make sure that these requirements were put in. Um, these cluster style mailboxes are basically federally approved, uh, U.S. Postal Service approved. They're off city right away. There will be an area of land that will have to be dedicated in a loading and unloading area. Uh, for purposes of public hearing, I would ask that the public hearing notices for both the planning and zoning public hearing and the public hearing tonight be made a part of the record by reference. The comprehensive plan be made a part of the record by reference and a copy of the city code be made a part of the record by reference. Beyond that, I can answer any questions you guys have about the cluster style mailboxes. All subdivisions, all subdivisions going forward will be clustered? All subdivision will be cluster style mailboxes going forward at the at the basically the requirements of the U.S. Postal Service. What happens in the older communities is homes get replaced and rebuilt. Will they still have mailboxes in front of them? Or? The way we understand it, and I would tell you that I would say that we've gotten somewhat inconsistent answers, but the way we understand it is the orphan lots, which is the one lot in a 10-house subdivision that was never built. When they build that house, that will be allowed. If everybody else has the you know, individual mailboxes that will be allowed. Um, and, you know, if it's a teardown rebuild, if everybody else has that, they will be allowed to have that. Chris, we will have the ability to uh, be sure that these are put on an acceptable structure. I think we had a photo of one not too long ago that personally I would say was unacceptable. You're so. talking about the sawhorse mailbox uh, yeah, structure? Yes. yes. It that's looked that's like somebody nailed a couple mailboxes of the sawhorse. Right. Um, yeah. The, the, our building code requires, if you guys remember when this initially came up, because it took longer to do the zoning code, we did a building code amendment that required any structure to be approved by the City of Warrington and the U.S. Postal Service. So we will still exercise approvals, and we did not approve that for the purposes of them gaining their occupancy permit, um, and we will still do that. One of the things I do want to note is that planning and zoning, they did request that we look at in the future some design standards, locked areas, secure areas for packages, not just mail, um, and whatnot, and so we, we did state that that would be something we'd bring back to them at some point. How'd you bring it? So now'd you bring that up? So if a Amazon Smile guy comes by and he drops a package at my house, that's permissible. But does that mean the U.S. Postal Service, if they're dropping a package by the houses, they're going to stop doing that? Or do we know about that? So I don't know that we have an exact answer. It's more anecdotal. The, the way I understand it is, there are packages that the Postal Service will still deliver to your house if that's essentially paid for. There are packages that they will send through the mail, and then Amazon will, we don't regulate whether they can deliver it to the individual residents. Any other questions? That's all I have, Mayor, from the city. Any questions from the public? If you do, please come forward, state your name at the podium. We'll give you five minutes to speak. Not seeing any, we move on. 
do have one more comment about the cluster cell mailboxes. Bart is an expert in cluster cell mailboxes, in case anybody has any questions. He really is. He knows a lot about the situation. He helped us a lot in planning and zoning. Did you find the sawhorse? No, I, well, I, I Bart, didn't know where his expertise came Bart, from. Do you know something about the sawhorse? Uh, I just didn't know where his expertise came well, from. Well, I think he was one of the people we contacted repeatedly about this. Oh, okay. Yes, absolutely. We did not let them get their occupancy permit, and they put up the permanent mailbox. Why did you contact him repeatedly? Bart? Yeah. Because we were trying to get the postmaster to change his mind. But why would Bart do that? As a state rep? Because he answers the phone when we call. I was just saying, As the thing a state is, rep. is, that's a federal yeah. level. It's not a state. I know, but I'm just sticking up for you, Bart. I'm taking it up for you. He was trying to help us, yeah. I'm just trying to correct our counselor to keep him online. Differentiate I was confused what, whether it was a state post office or federal. <laughs> uh, the next public hearing we have is section 405.287, regulations for group home providers. Um, this is a change to an update to our group home section. Um, it's pretty much self-explanatory. Um, we, we wanted to make sure in adopting these new regulations and definitions that they were current with the current state of the law, number one, and really to try to make sure that if group homes are coming into the city, they're not concentrated in one area, that they're dispersed evenly so there's equal opportunity for everybody that resides in a group home. One of the questions was raised is why do we consider group homes of eight or less you know, handicapped or mentally disabled people to be a single family residential that's required by federal law. Um, and this is just kind of tightening up some of our regulations and updating the regulations. For purposes of this public hearing, I would ask that the public hearing notice be made a part of the record by reference for the planning and zoning meeting in for tonight, the planning and zoning administrator's report, the comprehensive code, and the city ordinances of the city of Warrington. I can answer any questions that the board may have. That's all I have on behalf of the city on that public hearing. And all those will be duly noted. Any questions? We invite the public to come and speak. If you want to speak on ADM 100 for the regulations of group home providers, please come to the podium, state your name, and we'll give you five minutes to speak. Not see anybody, we'll move on to the listing and permitting conditional uses for ADM 99. The next public hearing is ADM 99. Uh, this is the Appendix A related to the group homes, and I am going to ask, um, there was a mistake, an error that, you know, we overlooked is basically this is an amendment to remove the group homes from the commercial districts. One of the things when you really look at our code, you know, um, we really want to try to keep residential uses in residential districts and commercial, retail, industrial uses that we project as future uses as, you know, one residential house going in could change the entire structure of it. So this is just kind of updating the code around that kind of idea. Um, one of the corrections that needs to be made, we had permitted in RC1 and RC2, so I am going to ask when the ordinance comes up that the RC2 be stricken as permitted and the reason for that is we basically want to make sure that I'm sorry RC1? RC1. Okay, RC1. I apologize. That was probably part of my confusion. Um, the RC1 be be stricken because the RC1 really is a planned commercial district and not really a planned residential district. So we wanted to make sure that the group homes were going in the residential districts as required by the law, but making sure that they're not going into our commercial and industrial districts. And, you know, that's one of the things as we kind of revamp and work on the code preparing for growth. We're going to probably bring that concept back to you, not just with group homes, but some of the other residential uses. For purposes of this public hearing, I'd ask that the uh, public hearing notices for both planning and zoning and the meeting tonight be made a part of the record. The ordinances and comprehensive of this plan of the city of Warrington be made, made a part of the record. <coughs> Excuse me. And the planning and zoning officer's report be made a part of the record. I have any, I'll answer any questions that the board or the mayor may have. And I'll ask for that amendment when we get there later. And all those will be duly noted as well. Okay. Thank you, Mayor. Questions? 
At this time, we'll invite the public to come up and speak on this matter for ADM 99. Uh, if you would come to the podium, state your name, and we'll give you five minutes to speak. Not seeing anybody, we'll move on to section 405.050 for definitions, interpretations, ADM 98. Last one, Melody. Uh, this is a public hearing for ADM 98, and these are all the definitions that relate back to the prior public hearings. Um, there is a new definitions for cluster style mailboxes, cluster style mailbox area, transitional living facility, group home for mentally development, development for mentally developmentally and physically handicapped person. Um, these are essentially the definitions that establish you know, these different elements for the ordinances and the regulations and the code. For purposes of this public hearing, I guess, I'd ask that the planning and zoning officer's report be made a part of the record by reference. The public hearing notices for the planning and zoning meeting and the meeting here tonight may be made a part of the record by reference. The comprehensive plan and the code of the city of Warrington be made a part of the record by reference. That's all I have. I'm prepared to answer any questions from the mayor and the board. All those will be duly noted as well. Okay. I have nothing further, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. At this time, we'll go ahead and open it up to the public. For anybody who would like to come and speak on behalf of ADM 98, please come forward. And we'll state your name at the podium, and we'll give you five minutes to speak. Not seeing anyone, we'll go ahead and bring the public hearing section of the Warrington Board of Aldermen for Tuesday, July 16th. 2019 to a close and open the regular Board of Aldermen meeting. If you would, please rise and say the Pledge of Allegiance with us. First item up would be the consent agenda. We have the regular meeting minutes from July 2nd, 2019. I'll entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda items as submitted. So moved. Second. Motion made by Alderman Dyer, seconded by Alderman Deloy. Roll call vote. Alderman Deloy? Yes. Alderman Schultz? Abstain. Alderman Shell Harvey is absent. Alderman Dyer? Yes. Alderman Auk? Yes. Alderman Miller? Yes. Motion passes four to zero with one abstaining and one absent. Next, we'll be hearing from the public. Anybody who'd like to come to the podium and speak on any any matter, please come up, state your name, state your business, and we'll give you five minutes to speak. Not seeing anyone, we'll move on to the next item, which will be Board of Alderman comments. I would just remind people about the um, meeting tomorrow night regarding the North 47 sidewalk project. Thursday. Thursday. I'm sorry. Thanks, Scott. <laughs> Thursday. Alderman Schultz would be 4 to 7. Thank you. Thank you. Several people asked me why we're even having the meeting. They just want us to get going. <laughs> you know, I've heard the same thing. Um, but, you know, even if it, nobody shows up, the information the opportunity is there to gain anything you need to know. And I've had some people ask us, so, you know, why do you have to cross or what be yeah. nice tell them, make the meeting and we'll answer all questions there. We'll Shoots. talk about everything. But it's yeah. exciting to know that we're finally going to get sidewalks. Next will be Mayor's comments. I'll be honest with you, I just didn't have much. It's been a busy two weeks. I hate to say that. I know it's a cop-out, but it's the truth. So, apologize. Wish I had more comments to make. Uh, except for I'm not enjoying the heat, if anybody is. Uh, tell me how you are, because I'm not. Next will be... The approval for the road closures on September 28, 2019 for the Fall Festival from 6 a.m. till midnight. Anybody want to speak on it? I'll talk about it. It's the, um, I don't know, do you have the map? So 
it'll be the same roads that we've closed in the past, Main Street, and then goes out one block on each side of Main Street from Troy Road all the way down here to in front of City Hall, Morgan, um, and it'll be closed for a fall festival. Map is the last picture. Drop box. Any questions? Both, both those water roads are based. Um, they both go one way. However, on Oak Street, I believe, we do not allow parking. Any other questions? All right, I'll entertain a motion to approve the multiple road closures. So moved. Second. Motion made by Alderman Miller, seconded by Alderman Schultz. Roll call vote. Alderman Schultz? Yes. 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 Alderman Miller? Yes. Alderman Deloy? Yes. Motion passes 5 0 with one absent. Next, we'll hear from City Administrator Terry Thorne. Um, the only thing I have for you this evening is just to make you aware um, of a situation. We had a complaint related to a large vehicle um, that parks regularly on Thurman Street. So we sent the public works director to investigate and look at that street. It also caused us to look at our existing code related to commercial vehicles. And what we found is that in the traffic code section of our existing code under Schedule 9, it relates to parking and commercial vehicles. Um, currently in our code, commercial vehicles that are licensed for 24,000 pounds or greater are not allowed to park in residential areas of the city. Um, there are some accepted locations, um, but for the most part, if it's a residential zoning district, there is no parking. And I bring this to you tonight just to let you know that um, we've spoken with the chief and we will begin enforcement of this. I'm not sure how we've overlooked it, although there was some confusion about the fact that they're legally licensed vehicles and how that related. But I've clarified with our city attorney that yes, in fact, we can enforce that. So we're going to start to do that. There have been many complaints over the years about different commercial vehicles in different locations. Um, this one on Thurman happens to be a larger problem because the public works director has determined that was never intended to have commercial vehicles. It apparently started as an alley um, and then got paved. So it's really not in a situation where it can withstand that kind of traffic. And I think there's been a lot of pack of times in the past that they've had to do a lot of patching there probably related to that. So just in case you start to hear something, we are going to start that enforcement. Um, the chief is working with his guys to make sure they all understand that. So if you hear it, it's related to just the beginning of enforcement of something that's already in our code. So is there, at this location and on Oak Street, are there damage that we need to patch or repair? Or what does the road look like at this point? Um, according to Guy, there are places that need to be patched at this point. I think they need to go out there and do a thorough um, survey of exactly how extensive that's going to be. Um, so I can't answer your question as I sit here tonight about what the real fix is and how extensive it might be, but I am positive there are some patching areas that need to happen fairly quickly. That's on his agenda to do that, to look at it. And if yes. it turns out to be a major issue, we'll probably budget it, I assume. But if it's something we can do within this year, we'll do that. If it's really just patching and something they can handle along with their other projects, and they have money in their operations budget you know, for patching and repair, it really depends on how extensive the damage is. That's really all I have for you this evening. All right. Thank you, Terry. Thank you. Next, uh, I don't believe Neil's here, so. Unfortunately, Neil's out. Okay. So who are we going to hear from on it? I'll actually hear from me. Okay. All right. So the first thing on the agenda is the monthly marketing and business support report of Neil's month. Contact this month. We also coffee and bistro. Anybody been there? I have. It's really nice. It is. Pretty affordable, too. I believe uh, some of the other, in the county, some of the other ones that are doing brunch are like up to 25 
per person, and he's charging 15 and you get a lot for it. So, I mean, I'm happy to see him here. I'm happy to see him offer it. Hopefully it'll start really taking off. First, our item agenda. Item agenda 10B is section 410 to include cluster style mailboxes, cluster style mailbox area ADM 101. There is a bill later tonight uh, that will um, approve these changes. We are asking that you approve it. And, you know, obviously we're going to look a little bit closer as, at the design and the style of boxes. And we're asking that you move forward both a zoning and a building regulation in place to protect the people moving in these new subdivisions or old ones where they never built any houses. Who owns possession of the cluster mailbox for maintenance purposes, for key? Is that owned by the Postal Service or It is not owned by the Postal Service. We have set it up where essentially they will have to either, Bart asked me about this after the last meeting, but basically they're going to have to have a subdivision association or come up with some type of mechanism subject to the city's approval so that you know, as it becomes dilapidated or the mailbox loading area becomes dilapidated, they will be required to do the repairs. It's not going to be like water or sewer where we take that over. Okay, so, Chris, if there's an HOA set up, the city must approve that in the, the subdivision? Well, we're not going to get into the metrics of the subdivision. We will review the covenants and restrictions related to the ownership and maintenance of, of, the, of the cluster style mailbox area and the cluster style mailbox. I, one of the things I've said is, look, if somebody's going to own this property and take care of it, that's a resident and there's an easement for everybody to go across to do it, that's great. Um, but our intention is to make sure that this is fully uh, the maintenance and the replacement is not ever the city's responsibility. It will be the subdivision association or the individual owner that's responsible. We also talked about having possibly even the idea of like a perpetual cash bond that a developer can put up. So if they don't want to do the homeowners association, they can put up a $25,000 cash bond that will hold an escrow just for the replacement. So if the replacement's required, we can you know, go ahead and do that, but our intention is to make sure it's not an additional expense for the city. So the development that's currently by the park where the cluster sits where you enter into the north entrance into the park, who owns that lot? Is it owned by the developer? It is owned by the developer, yes. Okay. So in theory, the developer could abandon it once they have the subdivision built out, and that's where the issue would arise if the developer... We potentially could, although I thought we required them to get a covenants. Okay, so what we did on that subdivision, it was not everybody because he had already sold some of the houses, but we required him to record a covenant that created a homeowners association and um, required them to replace it and be responsible for it. It, it did, now some of those houses were outside of those covenants, but you know there's still enough people that will be required to replace it if the city sends them notice. Uh, I mean, the fear of this is that. 5, 10, 15 years down the road when these things start either get destroyed by a car, somebody hits it, or a kid goes out there and, and we're, that we're going to have people sitting in here saying fix our mailbox and it's really, they should be up to the post office saying to the postal people, this is your mailbox, but that's not what, how it's going to work. Well, that's not their mailbox. I mean, <laughs> understand, Alderman, I feel like you were sitting in the discussions we had about this, about the replacement of it, because it was one of our biggest concerns was, you know, it was a little bit surprising that when the developer just told them they had to go to the post office to get their mail, they weren't going to put in the cluster style, that we have nothing to do with it. 99% of the cities don't regulate mailboxes, and Neil confirmed that when he did a survey. Um, we, we definitely contemplated this idea that if the thing gets knocked down or is dilapidated, they're going to come to the city and say, well, we don't want to pay to fix it. So that's why there's the requirement of the covenant and restrictions approved by the city related to that mailbox maintenance. Um, and it's going to be something we're going to continue to kind of work on, like a long-term maintenance escrow is one of the ideas. We took that out of this because it just wasn't ready yet. So I think you'll see an additional, additional material with regards to this. Because, I mean, the other not to expand on this, but we have the same problem with stormwater facilities, you know, so 
I mean, it's the same issue. We do not want to, you know, water, sewer, street lights, we take those over. Streets, stormwater, we never take that over. But as you guys have seen over the last 10 years, we've kind of taken them over by default because of the exact point you made. So I think that'll be something else we'll look at next with this concept is the long-term stormwater maintenance as well so that doesn't become an expense 25 years down the road. So if there's no more questions, I'll move on to the next one, section 405.287, regulation for group home providers. I discussed this in the public hearing. I don't know if you guys have any additional questions, but this is just kind of updating our law, our code with the law, um, reflecting what regulations we can have in effect. So any questions? On. All right. The next one is regulation for group Wait, did I miss that? Yep, I just did that one. Uh, the listing of permitted and conditional uses. As I said in the public hearing, this is the one where I am going to request that RC1 be an amendment to the ordinance to remove RC1 as a permitted use. Um, and this is just the, when we update the regulations, we want to update the appendix as well so it, it's consistent with the regulations and there's no internal conflict within the code. Any questions on that? Next. Uh, the next one we have is section 405.050 definitions and interpretations ADM 98. Um, this is once again just corresponding with the definitions to make sure our code is internally consistent from definition to regulation to the appendix. Um, we really try to make sure that anything that's in the appendix is defined in the code so there's no question and the interpretation is clear for the public and for developers. So what rides over the other? So Right now, we, we're approving an ordinance that we can come in starting August 1st and inspect homes, and based on square footage and all that, we can determine the occupancy amount. Does the group home, is that subject to the same rule? Because the last part of this yes. says something to the effect of not create overcrowding. Well, overcrowding is kind of defined in our new ordinance by square footage and all yes. that sort of stuff. I mean, this is a federal requirement to say that basically eight physically handicapped people can live together in one residence and be considered a single family home. It does not, um, what's the word I'm thinking of? It does not completely re eliminate our ability to regulate the density. It's just the zoning. So that's building code and it says you can't put eight people in a 500 square foot house that doesn't have a kitchen or a bathroom. That would still apply. Any other questions or comments? All right. Next one is the subdivision approval request for Mosher's at 1035 Armory Road, subdivision 73. Bart is here to speak on that matter. Um, can we pull that up, maybe, Melanie? This is a subdivision of the bank lot, or creating of a new lot, subdividing off the former bank building. I'm not sure what bank was in there. I can't remember, but... Vantage. Vantage, okay, all right. Uh, Vantage was there. They're subdividing it off to include 18 spaces. It's basically going from five acres to three and a half and 1.5 acre. For those of you that watch planning and zoning, there was a concern because of the number of spaces. They were below the required number when they subdivided. They were already below the required number, but it would put them further below the required number. Uh, we talked to BART. They went out and striped, and they added 37 spaces. 27 spaces to get them to the required number. I think they have part, what, 130? 138 is what 138 I now. So plus or minus because I'm not a very good counter sometimes. So there was some discussion, and I just want to make sure that's clear. This Approving the subdivision will not take Mosher's out of compliance since they've corrected the, the – they've restriped the lot, and they have more than enough ample parking. So this is simply just approval of a subdivision. They meet the code requirements. Um, and barred anything you want to add to it. No, this, this is pretty simple as you can get, taking five acres and making a one and a half acre track and three and a half acre track and putting each building on its own lot. I said you admitted you weren't very <laughs> on the record. Well, because if Neil goes out there and it's like 137, then, uh, oh, you know, I don't want to get in trouble. I, so. I hear you. Other questions? 
the easy time. Yeah, I used to that. <laughs> Just kidding. Thank you. Thank you, Bart. If we uh, if we could go back to ADM ninety eight, I don't believe you spoke on that. If you could cover cover that, please. I apologize, man. Feel like I'm getting old as I sit here because I can barely read what's on the. So definition and interpretations, if I didn't address it, that once again, this is just the adoption of the new definitions to make sure we have internal consistency between the code, the appendix, and the definitions. Any questions on that? Thank you. I appreciate that. <coughs> Anything further? I think that's all you have to listen to for me tonight. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Next, we'll hear from Maintenance and Grounds Director uh, Brad Buzikruz. Good evening, Mayor and Board. Uh, you have my monthly report. I don't know if you have any questions. I don't know if you know the answer to this, but if you look at how many times the field was, we were dragging the field, does that mean we have a lot of tournaments going on right now, or does anybody know how that's going? At the tournaments? Uh, yeah, because usually that's a big item in the summer months that we were out there dragging the field because there's a lot of well, tournaments coming in from outside the area. A lot of the dra dragging is done just for our ball uh, season, just for the leagues, league play. We've got adult softball, we've got uh, church groups, we've got uh, other, you know, some tournaments and this and just our nor nor normal leagues. So, I mean, that's a lot of it. It's th the tournaments that we've had, I think we've only had one complete and we've had uh, I think three of them that one of them has been rained out in t and two that have only played a one one day tournament because it rained one day out so that's something that's kind of dropped off over the last year or so or is it function of weather or function of marketing big as it used to be okay so the concept well, a couple years ago it was a huge thing I don't know that it's as big as it was then um, I know they're still marketing it and we're still trying to get it out there but just not them, they're not near as big. Any other questions for Brad? Yeah. Thank you, sir. Next, we'll hear from the build, building commissioner, Mike Cross. Good evening, Mayor and Board. You have my monthly report. Questions for Mike? Is the uh, real king uh, folks um, moving along according to the schedule? In fact, there's a lot going on out there. As close as they can, as weather permitting, yes. In front of the the mall, the uh, grass and weeds that have grown up to massive proportions. Who's responsible for uh, mowing that down? Until that, until MoDOT completes the turnover of the parts of that roadway that we're taking over, um, it is still MoDOT responsibility. But it appears to me that it's in limbo. At it this looks point. like it's in limbo. Yeah. Yeah. So hopefully that'll be completed soon. Um, I think things have been slowed down some. I know that all of the survey work that we needed to do. To prepare the documents has been done by um, our engineers, so I, I don't, I'm not sure exactly what the slowdown is, but it seems that it's taking in a very long time. Maybe they'll do it when <clears throat> they stripe our street. I saw a striping oh. machine go down Highway U this morning. <laughs> oh wow! So Did I think I think they may be back into the area. That's what I was hoping anyway when I saw it. When, when we take over the road, we're going to obviously cut the grass down that's right adjacent to the road, but you got a pretty big ditch and it comes up on the other side. Is that all our responsibility? or? or um, are you talking about the side that is north of the outer road? between? No, I'm talking about the south side of the outer road between the, the road and the, the back of the buildings that follow the villages of Warrington. That looks... 
that's what I think that's what we're talking about. That looks yeah. horrible. Not so all of that will be ours. Some of the, it will be the, the a portion of it will be ours until you get to the the property line for the private property. Any other questions? Thank you. Next, we'll hear from Chief of Police Larry Ellard. But before we begin, I'll uh, I'll say I received a complaint that was in good nature. But uh, I, I believe they stated Sergeant Moser is doing a heck of a job running radar on uh, on Walton. So that he is. Uh, I believe every morning I've seen him stop at least one car, and a couple people have called and said uh, I apologize due to my speeding. I wasn't paying attention, and uh, I've got a ticket. And I said, Well, we'll see you at court then. I just have one item for you tonight, and that's the monthly report. I was glad to see that for the first six months, we're not really that ahead of calls that we were last year. We're pretty well neck and neck, and that's that's a good sign, I think. Um, a little bit of this drop number is because we found out in our reporting that <clears throat> um, some calls are being duplicated by dispatch. Some are being avoided. Some through a man call those out. This number is a more like the number you see for June. The totals that's a more accurate representation. We tried to really streamline our data gathering for reporting purposes. Any questions? All right, thank you. Bills and ordinance. Um, entertain a motion for the first reading of bill number 34-19. So moved. Motion made by Alvin Miller, second by Alvin Schultz. An ordinance amending the city's subdivision improvements ordinance by establishing standards for mailbox receptacles and their immediate surroundings. I'll entertain a motion for the second reading and passage of bill number 34-19. So moved. Second. Motion made by Alderman Delaware, second by Alderman Dyer. An ordinance amending the city's subdivision improvements ordinances by establishing standards for mailbox receptacles and their immediate surroundings. Roll call vote. Alderman Dyer. Yes. Alderman Ock. Yes. Alderman Miller. Yes. Alderman Deloy. Yes. Alderman Schultz. Yes. Bill passes. Bill passes 5-0 with one absent. I'll entertain a motion for the first reading of Bill Number 35-19 with the, I believe, the omission of RC1. Is that correct, Counselor? That's correct. That's what I'm requesting. No move. Second. Motion made by Alan Miller, second by Alan Deloy. Ordinance amending Chapter 405 Zoning Regulations of the Code of the City of Warrington, Missouri regarding group home and transitional living. I'll entertain a motion for the second reading and passage of Bill Number 35-19 with the omission of RC1. So moved. Second. Motion made by Alderman Dyer, second by Alderman Schultz. An ordinance amending Chapter 405 Zoning Regulations of the Code of the City of Warrington, Missouri regarding group home and transitional living. Roll call vote. Alderman Ock? Yes. Alderman Miller? Yes. Alderman Deloy? Yes. Alderman Schultz? Yes. Alderman Dyer? Yes. Bill passes 5-0 Bill pass with one absent. I'll entertain a motion for the first reading of Bill number 36-19. So moved. Second. Motion made by Alderman Schultz, second by Alderman Dyer. Ordinance accepting the resubdivision of part of lot 1A of Moser subdivision plat 3 by the city of Warrington, Missouri. I'll entertain a motion for the second reading and passage of bill number 36-19. So moved. Second. Motion made by Alderman Miller, second by Alderman Dyer. Ordinance accepting the resubdivision of part of lot 1A of Moser subdivision plat 3 by the city of Warrington, Missouri. Roll call vote. Alderman Miller? Yes. Alderman Deloy? Yes. Alderman Schultz? Yes. Alderman Dyer? Yes. Alderman Ock? Yes. Bill passes 5-0 with one absent. I will entertain a motion to close the regular Board of Alderman meeting to go into executive session for legal counsel and real estate. Second. Motion made by Alderman Schultz, second by Alderman Deloy. Roll call vote. 
Alderman Deloy? Yes. Alderman Schultz? Yes. Alderman Dyer? Yes. Alderman Ock? Yes. Alderman Miller? Yes. Motion passes 5-0 with one absent. We are so adjourned and we're moving into executive session.